Arcvis is great, but it can also mean repetitive and tedious work when it comes to the modeling part of it. For example, when you make cabinets for a kitchen, pantry or similar, while keeping accuracy and precision in mind. Speaking from experience, from when I designed for my cabinetry business, it's a lot of going back and forth between object and edit mode to make adjustments. Today I'm going to show you a neat little trick how to make this all easier by using vertex groups and the hook modifier. It's also non-destructive, so you can make easy adjustments at any later point. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to save the base setup to your asset browser, so next time you have a project where you need to do this, you can simply just drop it in and start building your scene. So I have this little scene set up here and we have a stove, a range hood and a fridge in there. And in a real world scenario, those positions are often given due to the supply, power supply for the stove, the exhaust for the range hood, water supplies for fridge and, and so on. So you'd have to build your kitchen around that. So let's have a look at the basic layout that is proposed for this kitchen here. We have a pantry cabinet by the fridge and we'll start with a 600 millimeter standard drawer cabinet by the fridge, a 400 millimeter waste bin pullout, and then we have a 200 millimeter oil pullout by the stove and the drawer cabinet is just going to be what it whatever fits inside. We'll have to establish that. And another drawer cabinet on the other side here on the stove. Same thing, we'll have to establish the size for that. The first thing I would, what, would do here is I'm going to bring in two panels that I've already prepared and a cabinet body. This one is for the 600 millimeter drawer cabinet. And the way I model them is the way I would also build them, that I have the two sides going all the way through and the top and bottom are wedged in between there. So in order to build my scene now, I would take this one here and I would shift the X to constrain it on the X axis and I'm snapping it to the stove. I have face snapping enabled here. So now I would go into vertex select, wireframe, select everything on the right side and GX minus 400 because I know I want to have a 200 millimeter cabinet there. So the next thing I will do is grab this one here, shift the X, snap it to this cabinet and I would grab the other side of the cabinet and GX 200 minus that way I have my 400 millimeter cabinet right here and lastly I would shift the X one more time snap it to that cabinet and then grab these ones and GX snap them over there and that way I would establish my 876 millimeter cabinet and I would keep going like that so it's a lot of back and forth going in between object and edit mode uh, going into wireframe to select vertices etc and it gets even worse when it comes to the fronts. So if I bring in my fronts here that I have prepared, these are designed to have a two millimeter reveal all around them. So in this case, if I wanted to have a full front on that waste bin pullout, I would maybe take this front and this cabinet and go into local view just to have it a little easier to see. So I would select my front here, shift the X and snap it to this side and then GX to to bring it over again two millimeters then go into vertex mode wireframe select all of these bring them over gx snap them to the outside gx to minus to get the two millimeter reveal and do the same thing one more time on the top gz to minus to get my two millimeter reveal and I would have to continue this for all the other cabinets. So I started thinking about how to streamline this process because I do it so often when I design a new project for production. And at some point I read something completely unrelated about cloth simulations and how to move cloth around with hooks while the simulation is running. And I thought, hmm, that could be something. Why not try it? And it worked out better than I expected. So let's see how to do it. So I'm going to undo everything we've done so far until I'm back at my base cabinet. And I'm just going to go into local view for the time being. That way we can just focus on that. So the first thing I want to do is under my data properties here on the cabinet, I want to establish two vertex groups. I'm going to call them left and right. So now I can select my cabinet and go into edit mode. I'm going to select everything on the left side and choose my left vertex group and hit assign. Now take everything on the right side 
select the other vertex group and hit assign. Now I can go to my modifiers and add a modifier deform hook. And I want to make sure the bevel is underneath that. I'm also going to hover over it and hit shift D to duplicate it. So now I can choose my vertex groups here, one for the left and one for the right. And you can see that the hook symbol on the modifier is still red. And that's because we don't have any hook objects in the scene yet. I'm going to use empties for that. And unfortunately, there is no hook shaped empty. So I'm going to use spheres instead rather than plain axes. And I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So I'm going to select my cabinet, go into edit mode, select my face here, shift S cursor to select it. And I'm going to shift A add an empty sphere, which is way too big. So S to scale and bring it down to about 0.05 or whatever fits your, your visual need. For me, it's enough if they're that small. I'm also going to shift D X snap that to the other side. So I have one for each side. And it's also helpful to have a decent naming convention. So by the time your scene gets more complex, you know what is what. So I'm going to select my empties and rename them quickly to BC for base cabinet. Hook left. And the other one is BC hook right. And the right one, I also want to scale up to about 0.075. Again, you'll see in a minute why. Now I can go back to my cabinet here and under the hook modifiers, I can choose my hook objects, left and right. And you see the symbol is white and you also have the relation lines. And that is the whole setup. So now if I take my empty here and start moving it, it's gonna move the whole left vertex group around. Now, in order to make sure that my hooks always stay in place. I'm also going to select them both and shift select the cabinet and control P to parent them. So now if I move the cabinet, the hooks will always stay on the outside of the two sides. So now if I tap out of local view and select my setup here, you can also go in the outliner and just select the hierarchy if you find it hard to select the empties, which can be the case sometimes, especially once you build your scene up a little. So now I can shift D X and snap it to the stove and I can take my empty here on the right side, G X 400 minus. And now I have a 200 millimeter cabinet. I don't lose my precision, but I don't have to jump around between object mode and edit mode and select vertices, etc. Now, because this is a non-destructive workflow, the origin doesn't move along with it. For me, that's okay. Um, what I want to make sure of though is if I would tap into edit mode now, it would be a 600 millimeter cabinet again. So I want to make sure I activate edit mode and on cage for my modifiers. And that way, if I go into edit mode on those objects, I can still, for example, go into edit mode or into edge mode and activate the edge length and it gives me the correct measurement. So that way I can non-destructively change my cabinets and yet still get the precision and extract precision measurements out of it. And I could just go on and keep going on this. I'm going to select the hierarchy, shift D X, GX snap that there. And I'm going to take my left side GX 200. That way I have my 400 millimeter cabinet and I'm going to select the hierarchy again. Shift D, X to constrain, snap it to that cabinet, grab my MT here, GX, snap it to that side. And now you can see why I choose spheres and make one side bigger. So by the time we snap the cabinets together, they will overlap and plain axes would just be a nightmare in terms of selecting and knowing which one is which. And if I stay consistent with always making the right side bigger. I always know which side is which. So I always know that this one here, the bigger one is for the right side cabinet. And the smaller one here is for the left side. And one more benefit of it being non-destructive is 
that if I select my cabinet and check my scale here, it stays uniform at 111 as long as my original cabinet has the scale applied. So I don't have to worry about that when I resize them. So now let's do the same thing for the fronts and there it gets even better. I'm gonna bring in my fronts here again and I'm just gonna delete the top two. I'm going to select the hierarchy on the first cabinet here and my front and I'm gonna tap into local view again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my two empties. I'm gonna shift D them and I'm gonna right click to cancel the movement. And first thing I wanna do is Alt P to clear the parent. So now in top view, I'm gonna go G Y and bring them all the way up to the front so they line up with roughly the middle. You can also switch over to edge center snapping and G Y snap them to the edge, to the center of the edge of the front. Also gonna switch over to individual origins here and scale them down a bit so on the fronts they're a little smaller. Back to medium point. In front view, I want to bring them GZ down. Again, snap to the edge center. That way they line up perfectly with the middle of the front. And because I brought them straight forward from the cabinet, I already have my two millimeter reveal here. So now all I gotta do is take these two, Shift D, R, 90, and switch back to face, select, uh, face snapping here and GZ snap it to the bottom of the cabinet. That way it gives me the two millimeter reveal there already. And the top one here, I'm just gonna GZ snap it to the face of the front and GZ to, I only have to do that once. So that way I have my two millimeters there too. So now I'm just gonna rename them quickly before I do anything else. And then I can select all four of them. So shift select my front, control P to parent them to it. And now as we did before, I can select my front and under data properties, this time I wanna have four groups. For left, right, top and bottom. And again, go into vertex mode and select and assign their respective groups. And when that is done, I can add four hook modifiers. Hover over it, one, two, three. And now I can select my hooks and assign the vertex groups, just like we did before. Right, this one I'm gonna make the top, and this one will be the bottom. And again, I wanna stay consistent with having the bottom and the right one, the bigger one. So now if I select all this here, again, I can in the outliner select the hierarchy that makes it easier. So I know it's a 310 millimeter front. So I'm gonna shift D Z 312 to get my two millimeters. And then I'm just gonna shift D Z and bring this somewhere up here. Um, when the, the difference gets too extreme, I like to just bring it up somewhere so that the origin is not completely out of whack. And then I can just grab the bottom empty and GZ snap it to that face and the top one GZ snap it to the top of the cabinet. And I have a perfect front set with two millimeter reveal all around. And you have that level of precision with your empties. So now if I wanted to have my 400 millimeter cabinet covered with a front here. I could just select my hierarchy here, shift DX, bring this over by 600 minus, because I know it was a 600 millimeter cabinet. I can take my empty here and ideally I switch over to edge snapping and I'm gonna go GX and snap it there. And I have my perfect two millimeter reveal there. And I'm gonna grab the top, GZ, snap it to the top of the cabinet. And again, I have my two millimeter reveal. And now I can just easily keep duplicating my fronts with the empties and snap them in place. And they already give me my perfect two millimeter reveal on all the cabinets. So ever since I started using this method, it has made my life quite a bit easier and sped up my workflow by a good amount.
because it's something I do all the time. Um, it doesn't just have to be for cabinetry. It can be for resizing doors or windows or something that is completely unrelated to Arcvis. Uh, there's many cases where that can apply. It may not be feasible for every situation and for every project, but if you have something that has a lot of repet repetitive workflows in it, I think it's a great option. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about the method and if you have improvements or better ideas or if you think I'm completely nuts, may very well be. Now, of course, I understand that you don't want to have to set this up every time you start a new project. So let's look at a way to save this setup to your asset browser. So next time you have something, you can just drop it in and start building your scene and work right away. Personally, I have a separate blend file with a whole bunch of standard cabinet assets, like for example, the base cabinets, hanger cabinets, uh, plain fronts and shaker style fronts. Now, all you wanna make sure is that your hook empties are properly parented to your cabinet and that you have your vertex group set up and your modifiers set up. And then you can just select your cabinet here and right click on it and mark as asset. And once you have that marked as asset and you pull up your asset browser, uh, you can organize it to whatever makes sense to you. I have it under cabinetry. I have a bodies and fronts, even separated by material thickness. So whatever makes sense to you, you can organize it that way. So now if I jump back into this file here and pull up the asset browser, I can go to cabinetry, bodies, Say I want to have a 19 millimeter base cabinet. I can just drop that right in there. I'm going to snap it to the back wall and I can take my empties and GX snap it there and GX snap it there. Just looks like I'm a little low. So GZ 100. And same thing if I wanted to have some hangers, I have hanger cabinets saved here. I can drop that on there, snap it to the wall, bring it up by 480 to have the proper distance. This one's 600 millimeter. Let's say I want to have a 900 millimeter. I can grab my top empty here, GZ 300, and I have my 900 millimeter hanger cabinet. And the same thing goes for the fronts. All you want to make sure of, again, is that your empties are parented to the front, your vertex groups and modifiers are set up. Then you right click and mark it as an asset and you can just drop it in here and snap it in place. Uh, let's bring it over to there and then you can GX, snap your empties in place and you have your perfect two millimeter reveal no matter where you drop it into the scene, right? And you don't have to save a ton of different fronts. So for me, I have a shaker style and a plain front because even when you drop in a, sh a standard shaker style front here and you want to give it a different profile, so you would just select the outside edges here and say you want to have it profiled a little. So let's control B to bevel. Uh, let's give it three segments or two segments here and make a custom profile on there it still works because it gets transferred into the vertex group. So if I grab my empty now, it still works perfectly. So you can make changes to your fronts after you drop them in without breaking the setup. So to quickly recap, you assign the sides of your objects to vertex groups. You add hook modifiers and assign the vertex groups to the modifiers and use empty spheres as hook objects, scale one side up and stay consistent with the side you scale up, parent the empties to your objects and assign those hooks to your modifiers and start adjusting sizes without going back and forth between object and edit mode and selecting vertices, etc. Make sure to push all those buttons, like and subscribe and be less frustrated and have fun. And now that you've mastered the hook modifier, you should learn how other modifiers can save you time and speed up your workflow without losing precision in your projects. And you can do that by watching this video right here.